Okay, it's recording. <laughs> okay, this, um, this problem is a null spaced one. You've gotten several null spaced. It's procedural. You just do what you're supposed to do for null space and um, column space. Um, and this is one of those things that you could probably just go over to someone. You know, if you can teach it to someone in Calc 1, then it's procedural, right? Because they don't need to know anything. You say, do this, do this, do this, and do this. So that's what's nice about it. What I think weirded people out was the dimensions are all weird. So you'd have here three rows and four columns. So it's not a square matrix. So things kind of don't ma look like they match up right. And with my dimension problem with the last session, last thing, you wonder about my own problems with this. But um, the main issue was getting the size of those vectors correct. And so um, I'm going to put new sub-questions on the final regarding this kind of a problem to guide you along. So the sub-questions will be in, uh, will be exactly like this. I'll leave a little box and ask you where the null space lives and where the column space lives. So for example, the null space is a subset of R to the, and the column space is a subset of R to the. How do you get those answers? Um, well, you look at the null space are the set of x values that solve ax equals 0. So it's the x values that go into the null space. The x values here have to have four components, or otherwise the multiplication won't work out. So what goes in this box? It'd be 4, because otherwise you won't be able to plug in enough components. The column space, on the other hand, are the y values. How many components are there in the y values? And after you do the multiplication, you see you get three rows, right? So there's three components. So the three goes right here. And that's how you can get the dimensions straight. And the other issue was, again, the, the Tyler thing that, well, I don't know what to put for nullity because I don't remember what nullity means. <laughs> Um, so it's, again, the definition of nullity, which I'm sure many of you were kicking yourself <coughs> after you realized it's just the number of basis vectors in the null space. <coughs> so again, null space is the solution to AX equals zero. I don't think anyone that's sitting here got this wrong. And that's actually pretty unusual. You usually have at least one or two people at the end of the semester that can't row reduce. So <laughs> we're doing pretty good compared to what I've seen in the past. And there's always a handful that can't get the null space. So everybody here gets this correct. And we'll get this correct on the final, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you REF that thing. And uh, a tip here is to keep the zeros, because how that dimension problem became, came about is you were cutting corners, and you didn't have the zeros up there, and you got this thing here. And pretend those zeros weren't there. Some people had x1 plus 2x2 two two is equal to 17 over 5 or x uh, two, 3 is equal to minus 3 over 5 beca because they didn't have the zeros on the side and they didn't double check and make sure that the dimensions were correct. Really, you have four dimensions because you have four components that you're looking for. And so you set those things up, and everybody here knows how to do this. I, my x, x is, oh yeah, they're in there. So everybody seems to know this. I skipped some steps. Um, because I'm pretty confident everyone in here can do this, actually. So um, I'm, I'm taking some liberties at skipping some steps here. But you factor out the x2, you factor out the x4. These are your two basis vectors. That's your answer. That's the span. And from this, you also get the nullity. The nullity is equal to the number of basis vectors in there. See, that's what I was talking about before. This one? This, is, this is, has the span of the two vectors. I showed the two vectors. With what you have on the middle row. Right. I thought that was good enough because no. I'm showing the two vectors. It's still the same two vectors. It's not. It's not you, but you have to write it in this form on the bottom. Yeah, it's not. Um, y yes, because this is the definition of span. This is the procedure that gets you to the definition of the span. You're not all the way there. Okay? I, I put an arrow to it, pointing to it and saying span. Not Th good this enough. Is the span. This is mathematics. We're absolutely precise about what we mean. When I say span, I know they're talking about a set. When you give me this, it's just a vector. This is not a set. This is not even in set notation. Right? This is, at best, parametric form, but then you'd have to tag on x2 can be any real number, and x4 can be any real number, or you'd have to say something about it being three variables. And still, it's a little vague. This is clear as a bell. 
It's all linear combinations of these two vectors. That's the definition of span. So I'm going to talk about my friend Ed Archer, who's not in math. Um, he wants to develop a model. And he was presenting his ideas on developing a model. He's uh, coming from exercise science. And he presented this at experimental biology. And there's mathematicians walking around amongst the normal people. And a mathematician came across his poster. And he said that she was not convinced and she was abrasive and asking questions. And I said, she just wanted to know what you were doing and trying to lay it out in precise definitions. She didn't mean anything by it. I already know, because mathematicians are all nice. <laughs> she didn't mean anything by it. We just got to know those definitions. And she said, she said after a while, after she asked him a few questions and she seemed doubtful, then all of a sudden she seemed on board. And I said, that's because she had figured out in her mind precisely where everything lays out. So until someone has it cleared, clear as a bell, they're going to keep pushing and asking questions. Not a, I don't think it's me. It's just I have to know these things. So when you write this, there's a gap here. It's not, this is not a set. Mm -hmm. These are just two I vectors. I wrote that with a little more words on the side. This Still not the same thing. thing. This is not the span. If you gave me this, it's not the span. From this, you can get this information. But if this is not the span. This is just two vectors with x1, x3, 2, and x4. It's still part of the procedure. Right. Now that you get down to here, you have to span. And I, I don't, I'm not quite sure about why this is, and I haven't totally done this, but I've noticed that um, students who are more likely to put this are also more likely to get more of the problems wrong in the test. Students who have correct notation are linked to higher scores. I haven't done a formal analysis of it, but I've noticed that at every level, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and, calc and linear algebra. So if you look at um, Calc 1, or Calc 2, people leave off the plus, plus C, or they leave off the DX. You look at the students who do that, they're more likely to not get a good score on their test. Um, so there's some kind of connection. You don't know what it is. Because the, you know, a student would argue with you and say, if I got the answer correct, what does it matter that I left off the dx? And that, that's, a, that's a pretty good argument, actually. That's, you know, if, they, if the purpose was to find the answer and they, they left off the dx, but if you can show overall, in general, people who leave off the dx are also more likely to get a C or below, that's not causation, but <laughs> there's, a, there's a correlation between that that would start to give you evidence that there might be some connection. And that would be my, uh, a good argument against not leaving off the notation. And I don't think, like as mathematicians, when we see the notation left off, it really bothers us. Probably because we had years and years of this weird training. <laughs> but it bothers us. Um, so some people mark it wrong just because they need to see that dx because it, it just really made them crazy not to see it. If I put um, 2 divided by 0, I think most of you get, would get weirded. If I just filled this board with a bunch of 2 divided by zeros, it would freak you out. So you have a little bit of that in you already. You wouldn't like to see it. But if you go to an uh, algebra class in a high school, people write 2 divided by 0 because they don't feel that same re revulsion, is that a good word, <laughs> when they see 2 divided by 0. Or if you saw someone uh, in algebra class with an answer like square root of minus 5. You know, you bother you. Say so you can't do that. You're, you're working with real numbers. It bothers you. But they don't feel that same revulsion. <laughs> so the nullity is the number of basis vectors So the, in, in the null space. So the nullity is 2. We just count. So the easiest thing you got to do here, <laughs> counting. Column space, um, I asked you to express this in terms of the basis vectors. It's the span. And notice that these vectors have dimension 3, as I exactly pointed out before, that the y values have three components. So I, I know that I'm in the right space, at least this time. And um, I row reduced this. I already have done this, this part. And I found the two pivot. So I'm ignoring. I just copied and pasted. I'm, I'm less likely to make the mistake in the other direction. And I see that these two are my pivot columns. So these two vectors are my pivot, are my basis vectors of the column space, and they go pop right up here. There's something called the rank, which is the dimension of the column space. That's two. 
and you can do a cross check if you did everything right and I can't tell you the number of times I've done this cross check in my head and went oops I did something wrong because the rank plus the nullity has to add up to be the dimension of the domain I already know that that's four I already got two and I'm pretty sure I did this right so this better be two otherwise we have a problem so the rank plus the nullity everything doesn't work out <laughs> it's just a quick cross check you can do in your head Okay, any questions on that? Again, I think I hit upon what were the mistakes on this problem. <laughs>